Oh, welcome back. It's still Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. In an effort to mitigate risks and enhance profitability, CRC Credit Bureau developed their Delay Propensity Score, the CRC DPS, a scoring model that predicts the pro probability of borrowers who have never been more than 90 days overdue delaying their loan repayment within the next 30 to 60 days as a result of the external social economic factors. Now, the score Score will also take into account factors such as credit history, dishonor checks, and um, financial data. Now, my guest, Dr. Ahmed Babatinde Kukbola, is a Nigerian banker, accountant, economist, entrepreneur, and business executive. He is the Group Managing Director, CEO of CRC Credit Bureau. He has over 30 years cumulative work experience spanning the public and the private sectors of the Nigerian economy. He has been the managing director, CEO of the Bureau uh, since its establishment in 2008. Now prior to this, he was also the pioneer CEO of the Abuja Enterprise Agency, AEA. He was also in the banking industry where he rose to the position of the chief finance officer, CFO and general manager of a publicly listed bank. Well, that's a mouthful. Well, he joins me now to discuss further um, issues concerning credit bureaus and, of course, uh, how businesses can protect themselves from the fourteen borrowers. Many thanks for joining me on Business Insights, Dr. Kukbola. Good morning. Thank you for having me this morning. All right. Uh, so let's talk about a uh, credit bureau, uh, where we have come from and where we are now in Nigeria. So what's the development been like over the years? It's been very interesting, I must mm. tell you. And I'm happy that uh, the bureau, credit bureau, mm. uh, what we call credit reporting, mm. is really making its impact in Nigeria. Mm. Now, in 2009, three uh, credit bureaus were licensed to be able to support the banking industry to have access to credible information mm. that will enable them to take informed decisions. Yeah. Uh, the whole objective was make, to make uh, lending in the dark to be a thing of the past. Okay. Uh, is to give opportunity to banks and lenders generally to have opportunity to have information mm. about prospective uh, borrowers mm. and then analyze those information and then take a decision whether or not they want to do mm. uh, do actually grant them credit under what terms and conditions. Mm. Uh, at that time, Credit penetration in Nigeria was just around uh, 4%, okay. in which case, if you take uh, about 100 people, only four people had mm. access to credit. Okay. And me and you, we know what was going on in the, at that time. Yes, we do. Uh, you know, you'd have to know somebody who knows somebody mm. who knows the branch manager or know somebody in the bank for you to get credit. Okay. Uh, and of course, the incident of uh, non-performing loans was really rife. Mm. It was around over 30% oh, in 2009. So when the bureaus came in, uh, mm. uh, thanks to the Central Bank of Nigeria, who took that initiative to see how can we address all the challenges that uh, you know uh, surround the issue of access to credit, mm. uh, the issue of non-performing loans, the issue of default, and mm. the issue of fraudsters uh, in, in lending in yeah. the bank industry. They licensed those three bureaus, and CRC was one of the, the okay, three bureaus. licensed credit bureaus. Mm. I can tell you that today, uh, we have impacted the environment so significantly. Okay. Uh, uh, for now, we have over 45 trillion value of loans, loans. in the economy, compared uh, to around 16 trillion at then. that time. Okay, but then again, still not not too uh, long ago, uh, you, you talked at an event. You talked about a credit penetration for consumers in Nigeria, and the data released by bureaus uh, showed that uh, uh, fewer than 25 million Nigerians have enjoyed credit in the last decade. But the thing is that uh, right now, one would think that uh, there are like uh, lots of. Uh, companies, organizations, even granting uh, several loans, even all sort of unstructured mm -hmm. loans. So, so mm -hmm. what has the impact really been? Because I feel right now that um, almost everyone is actually giving out loans. Yeah, so that's the impact of the credit bureau infrastructure mm -hmm. in the economy. Yeah. Uh, lenders generally, whether they are licensed banks or mm -hmm. non-licensed institutions, now know that there is... Uh, uh, there are institutions mm. who have who have, who have harvested and yeah. have repository of information about borrowers mm. that they can access mm. and they can use that to provide the customers mm. and then grant credits to them. Mm. Today we have about 3 million okay. borrowers in Nigeria. 
compared to what it was then. Okay. And our credit penetration has moved to over 20%. Oh, wow. uh, I've told you uh, earlier that we have over 45 trillion uh, loans in the mm. economy as we speak. Mm. So those are significant changes. Okay. And even today, when you look at the non-performing loans rate, yeah. it's below 5%, even okay. by the central bank statistics and mm. the, and the uh, Bureau of Statistics uh, data. Mm. So that shows that there have been some level of uh, cleanup of the challenges of the of the of the issues that uh, surround no, not having access to credit. All right. Today we have almost 1,000 microfinance banks. All right. We have of about 25 or 26 uh, commercial banks. We have micro, uh, mortgage banks. We have so we have all manner of banks. In fact, we have fintechs. We have micro lenders mm -hmm. who are not so, even licensed by central bank. A lot of people going into lending now. Yes. Uh, why are they doing that? is to be able to see how they can support people to have access to credit okay. and they have the infrastructure to that will enable them to be able mm. to profile properly yeah. uh, so that they are not going to be lending in the dark so that mm. they can have adequate information, yeah. trusted information from mm. a third party yeah. uh, to leverage to mm. be able to give loans. Okay. And so so the place of our credit bureaus cannot be overemphasized because uh, not so long ago we we're all aware of what happened uh, with some uh, unscrupulous, uh, you know, uh, what I call them loan sharks. How the Central Bank of Nigeria uh, wielded its big stick and the FCCPC also did. But uh, over time, there have been innovation uh, in the industry. Specifically, now we hear of um, a credit risk calculator. Can you tell us about it and how it's uh, changing the face of credit and risk management? So the CRC credit risk calculator is one of the services we render to lenders. And the whole objective is to assist them to be able to calculate easily the risk inherent in a typical borrower. Mm. So when a borrower comes and apply for a loan, the, the whole essence, they want to know whether that borrower has the capacity to repay the loans Which and whether he will, he will be willing to repay the loans. Mm. So there's that capacity and willingness. Uh, to, those are two fundamental issues. Mm. Now, the risk calculator will enable them to have a scoring of the particular potential borrower, whether he is low risk, medium risk, mm. or high risk. Mm. Now, when they know that a typical uh, borrower is high risk, then they may turn it down. Okay. When a, 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 a typical borrower is medium risk, then they may have some conditions attached to that kind of loan. All right. Okay, maybe higher interest rate, or perhaps support uh, me some comfort in terms of collateral or, or, or security. Yeah. When a, a borrower is low risk, as uh, you know, as they could be seen from risk calculator, then yeah. they could relax a lot of things. And yeah. uh, they know that that person has always been doing very well with uh, make, making repayment obligations in the yeah. past. They know that uh, they can offer him relatively low interest rates. Yeah. Uh, they know that they don't need to excessively charge him, I mean, request him to go and bring yeah. on, uh, you know, collateral security mm. that he may not be able to have. Mm. So the whole essence is to be able to, you know, reward those who are good and encourage them to have access to credit without stress mm. and, you know, discourage those who are bad okay. from having access to, 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 credit. to, to, to credit. Okay. So, so invariably, in, in the long run, it actually is helping in uh, reducing non-performing loans? It's helping in reducing non-performing loans because then you have being able to leverage on good information to mm. select and, uh, you know, and, and, and um, you know, refuse what we call adverse selection mm. is to, uh, to, I mean, to encourage you to, mm. to be able to take advantage of that. Mm. But much more specifically is that it enables you to, to do uh, risk-based pricing, okay. in which case, uh, if a customer has low risk, mm. then he enjoys low interest rates. Okay. And so the error of everybody paying the same interest rate Mm. irrespective of the risk inherent in so that there'll be no the, ceiling per se for there everyone is, there is no, no ceiling okay. uh, low risk low interest rate mm. high risk high, high interest age. rate but how does this um, algorithm work because uh, it's sounding very techy to me right <laughs> well, well, well <laughs> it's techy because it requires it leverages on ai artificial intelligence and oh, machine wow, okay. learning to, yeah. to work so we are a data company mm. uh, and so we go into that data what are the kind of data we have we have loans that have been taken we mm. have uh, you know, how long that those loans have been taking, how many loans have a customer taken, what's the yeah. performance of those loans. So we, it's all this information that we put together to mm. generate the calculator. Okay. And it's between 0 to 100. 200. So if you have between 0 to 50, mm. that is a uh, low risk. Mm. And that then means that uh, you can enjoy 
uh, interest rate that is relatively low, yeah. and you also can easily have access to credit. Okay. But if your risk calculator is, let's say, is 80 or 90 percent, mm. that means you are a high-risk high risk. customer. So, the tendency is that uh, you may be declined. Yeah. So, but each institution, each, each lending institution will have to set their own threshold mm. uh, depending on their, uh, you know, risk, uh, you know, acceptance yeah. or, or, or risk uh, appetite. Yeah. Uh, some institutions are very low, uh, they have low risk appetite. So, mm. they go for only those who have right. very low risk. risk. And some don't mind taking mm. on, you know, big risk yeah. uh, and lend to those uh, high risk people, but mm. maybe with higher interest, high rate interest rates and probably higher or bigger collateral. Mm. Uh, so some other stiff conditions All right. that will be attached to, to those loans. All right, it's still Business Insights on PLUS TV Africa. We'll take a quick break and when we return, uh, we still have Dr. Pupola with us in the studios. We're looking more about uh, credit report, how you can go about checking your credit report and uh, if there are issues of um, error and how you can actually uh, mitigate against all of that. We'll be right back in a moment. Uh, don't go away. Welcome back. It's still Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. We're looking at risk management credit reports, uh, credit bureaus, and uh, of course, how we can actually improve um, the sector. I see have Dr. Pukbola with me of um, CRC Credit Bureau. Thanks for staying with me. Thank you very much. Okay, now there's issue of, uh, there's this talk of credit reports. Uh, how do you go about, maybe as um, a borrower, how do you go about um, checking your own credit report? Is it possible to do? It's very possible. Uh, credit report is like a statement, mm. like a certificate of your credit worthiness. Mm. Uh, it aggregates all the information we have about you from ev everywhere you have borrowed oh, wow. and all the information that we are supposed to have, your demographics information, your address information, the loans you have taken one by one. So that way you cannot even run away. You can't <laughs> run away. You cannot run away. So, okay. And that's the good thing about the system. Mm. And then it shows the performance of each of those loans. Mm. It, even where you have return checks, that mm. information is there oh, wow. in, the, in the credit bureau. Uh, if you have litigation against you uh, relating to the credit or yeah. any of the credit is mm -hmm. also in that credit report. So okay. that credit report is like a certificate uh, that shows who you are okay. and your credit worthiness. Right. And you can have access to it by going to the uh, website yeah. of uh, CRC Credit Bureau. Oh, is, it just a, is, it, is it just a CRC uh, or just generally Nigerians can actually check credit bureau? Can you get it from your own bank? You yeah. can okay. So we have a relationship with some banks yeah. where, when you through, if you have internet banking, mm. you can access the information mm. uh, through those internet banking of some of the banks, but yeah. not all of them. All right. But we encourage people to come to the website of CRC Credit Bureau. Okay, that is to, Okay, fine, fine. But uh, let's talk about. Uh, so, uh, are there issues uh, over time? Uh, maybe errors on credit reports and uh, is there a way uh, maybe lenders i'm sorry borrowers right now can actually do some sort of reconciliation we have we take that very seriously mm -hmm. because definitely there will be errors those errors can come from the institution that submit the data to us mm. or it can come from our, ourselves when we process those data. Mm. So what we encourage, and that's why we encourage everyone to go and get their credit report. Mm. Uh, and I know that everybody is entitled to one credit report in a year. One report one in a year. One report in a year, free of charge. Okay. So, and that's why I'm directing them to, okay. to the So it's a free thing, payment. you can actually just get you your credit report. You can get if it's one. Anyway, Any one. Day, thereafter, then you pay for it. Please. Okay, fine. Okay, so, fine. You then have to lodge your complaint okay. uh, with the bank mm. when you have spotted where the error come from. Mm. Or you can approach the credit bureau, uh, mm. you can send an email, mm. you can make, make a call in mm. and say, oh, I've spotted something on my credit report. Uh, mm. I don't think it's right. And yeah. they will help you to sort it out. Okay, fine. The last question would be... Uh Okay, after disputing credits and errors and everything, because most times some people have said that uh, when they try to get uh, loans, uh, they said they don't really have a good credit history or their names uh, will be placed on a uh, credit bureau list or something. How do you get your, your, your name or how your organization out of um, that particular list? So the credit bureau is not a black box. Okay. The credit bureau is just a data warehouse. Mm. And it's good to have your name in that credit bureau. Why is it good? It's good because if you have good credit history mm. from the data that we have, mm. even lenders will come looking for you okay. to give you loans. Okay. Okay. But if you have, your name is not there at all, then mm. nobody knows about you. Okay. And you then 
can become a high risk person and a, a high risk of a borrower. Okay. So people should not see credit bureau as uh, something that is punitive when, that's when how, your name that's goes in there. No, it. it's not like that. Okay. It, it becomes punitive for you if you have bad credit. Okay. And the information is accessed okay. and they discover that you do not you know, honor your obligations and yeah. you have bad loans. All right. But if you have good loans, I will encourage you to insist that your name should be put into the credit, credit bureau okay. so that you can have anybody who checks it up will be okay. interested in giving you loan under favorable terms and conditions. All right. Thank you so much. We have been speaking with uh, Dr. Tundi Kukbola, CEO of uh, CRC Credit Bureau. We do appreciate your time and all of the input you have brought on the show. Thank you so much. Nice day, everyone. All right. Uh, as we go uh, on the show today, 2030, Nigeria will top the league table of most extreme poor people in the world overtaking DR Congo, India and Madagascar if deliberate steps are not taken to stabilize the economy. Uh, that was the submission of Professor Starfren Deccan while delivering his keynote address at the launch of the State of Enterprise Report of 2022, which held here in Lagos. I'll leave you with details of that. I am Justin Akadoni. I'll see you again next time. Bye for now. Ten plus law firm. The maiden edition of the State of Enterprise Report 2022 brought together experts from the financial and professional services sector, FBS. The SAE report, a first of its kind, an annual industry publication, gives insight into Nigeria's FBS sector. The leader in his keynote address, a professor of economic policy at the University of Oxford, Stefan Deccan, stated that the financial and professional services industry is instrumental to driving any nation's economy. He noted that a Nigeria that thrives and is more stable with better economic policy will cause all businesses to flourish. Now, when you look at any country in the world, badly run or well run, Relatively speaking, you know, it can be a few thousand, can be a few hundred, can be a few dozen. Group of people with power or influence that determine the direction of politics and the economics in a country. Stakeholders say that if there is prosperity and no poverty, there would be peace. For them, the FBS industry is instrumental in driving the prosperity and economic development of Nigeria. We will ensure that together in our practice as professional firms, we give Nigeria the very best that it deserves. And we will also ensure that the private sector under this umbrella comes together as a partner with other sectors for growth and development of our, of our nation. There's clearly a need to change the narrative about Nigeria. And we can't leave it alone to the uh, public sector. The private sector also needs to take the initiative and give in the very critical role that the financial and professional services sector plays in economic development, as we have seen in other parts of the world. This is why the Enterprise NGR was established. It's about realizing that there's a bigger goal for all of us, and therefore engaging. And, you know, engagements have taken place historically in different forms. We think this kind of platform where there is hopefully a collective voice, a sort of unified voice, can also have maybe a bigger impact. Managing Director of a Merchant Bank, Banjo Adegbongbe, emphasizes the need for strong partnership between the business community and those with political powers. And we see the financial and professional services as a catalyst for economic development and growth. And the focus here is to provide a platform that can ensure that the financial and professional services sector in Nigeria can rank with that anywhere in the world and can also provide that catalyst and provide that platform to generate development and growth across all sectors of the economy. Just like other participants, Banjo hopes that if all chronicled in the report are adhered to, everyone stands to benefit from the ripple effects of economic development. It's a